Hunter Fish here looking at a Garmin Live Scope, and to give us some basics on it is legendary Lake St. Clair, Lake Erie, Detroit River Angler Heath Wagner. Been using electronics for years to dominate the BFL down there on that chain of lakes, including the largest bag of smallmouth bass ever in the state of Michigan or FLW competition. And so, hey, tune in for the basics on using a Live Scope. All right, Wagner, feel free to correct if I need to. So it's live scope. The actual transducer for it is on the trolling motor. So it actually has two transducers. One's here, of course, Lawrence, which is the down imaging and so forth, and side imaging. And then this one is actually for the live scope. And that cone goes straight out to what degree? So you got you got a 15 degree width on this live scope. 15, okay. So you got 15 degrees when that thing's shooting in front of the boat. You can also take this and it turns. If you turn it that way, you are shooting straight down. You're going to hit that. You're still going to have a, a six, a, you know, so wide of a area you're combing, but it's shooting straight down, and the, the graph will automatically adjust to wherever that's pointed. Most of the time, I keep it about right there. So, and I'm, and I usually shoot that puts you at shooting at about five to ten feet under the boat, as well as about sixty feet out in front of the boat at all times. So you got about a seventy foot range with that right there. At about 60 feet, they get a little bit hard to see, yeah. but uh, but that's that's about where I like it. You always keep it pointing forward, so wherever your trolling motor is pointing, that's where you're pointing. Some guys like them on a stick. I like it on a trolling motor because I can I don't have to do something else with my hand besides fish. Yeah. yeah. So, Wagner, how do you know there's fish down there? Hold up. Well. That's a fish, but the ones that are harder to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, right there. Right at the at end of the turn return. Those are all fish right there, just hanging up off the bottom. Here's How do you know those are fish and not just junk? You can... I mean, there's no weeds out here, obviously. And you can tell by the, the hard return, nice red return when they're on the bottom like that. And if you get the edge of them, you can pan. You can those pan. fish down there? You can pan to them. Unfortunately, some of those are out at the end of the, There's one right there. That guy right there. You can see how nice a harder return. And yeah. if you watch them close enough, you can actually throw your bait on that fish. Oh, I see it. They're moving a little bit fast. But he will actually, they'll start to move. This time of year, they're so dormant, they don't move real fast. But he's still there. You see him right there? He is. Right. Right here. Uh oh. Uh -oh. But I do touch screen, so you can tell how far away they are. Cause there's a, there's one right there, right here. See that one? Yep. Right there. So you can see 15, 20 feet away. Yep. So you're now 15 feet away. Yep. There's some more right there. See those guys? Yep. Clustered up on the bottom. So now on live scope, if you're a bluegill fisherman and you want to really know where the bluegill are, it makes it so simple because there they are. There's a big school of bluegill. And if we pan the trolling motor around, we'll find probably Painting some more. Panning it by turning left, right. Yep, there's, there's another school right there. So I just pan to the left. And you can see this small school, school of gills right here. And if you want to take like a school of gills like that, and you got a little, you got a little bobber, but this will be the same example. We're going to watch our bait. See, here's our here's our Ned rig falling right here on the, on the graph, which obviously I was short. Actually, I almost landed on a fish right there. <laughs> now there's the mother load of bluegills right there. Just a massive all across there. Those are all bluegills. All that stuff right there out to about 50 foot off the boat. All of that is gills. Is that what I'm seeing up here too? That is the same thing you're seeing up front, up on top. Ball. What do you ball. see? A little ball of bait and they're swimming kind of fast. So Where? Hold on. Now we gotta catch up with her. Just a minute. <laughs> They're right there, but they were hard, hard return. Just a minute, and they all went all the way to the bottom. Unfortunately, the return got weak on them. Right there, they are. See them? That's a ball of either bluegills, golden shiners, something, and they have, they have pushed their way back into. Is that, that yep. your bass right there? He's a bass. That's a bass. So there's one in front of him. And there's another one right there. Okay. 
Uh oh, I just hit, you just hit that. Play. Just hit that, and that gets it going again. You do anything special on your settings here? Or is it just default? No, let's, let's just. You can adjust the range, obviously, however far you want it to be. There's my net falling to. I'm, I'm a little short of that one fish. There's the net rig. Let's see if that fish. Still see the fish there, both of them. There's my dad hopping to that other fish right there. Here we are, yeah. 